Hello, everyone, and a blessed Pi Day to you. I'm Professor Beauregard G. Bogusian. My friends call me Bo, or Gus, or sometimes Bo Gus, of the Southern Tennessee Free University. I'm here to tell you about the work of the Institute for Pi Research. The mission of our institute, depending on who's asking, is either wiping the godless number 3.1415 off the face of the earth, or open-mindedly exploring alternatives to the secular humanist value of pi, or advising parents to tell their school districts that teachers should not be taking a side in this debate, but rather should be teaching the controversy. The controversy goes back to ancient times, when people tried to figure out the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the circle's diameter in equation form, circumference equals diameter times what? Is it 3.1415, as modern-day self-styled experts will tell you? Some of these experts say pi is actually 3.1416, so we can already see some cracks forming in their so-called consensus. But let's take a fair and balanced look at what other civilizations have said about pi. The ancient Egyptians said that pi was 3 and 13 81sts. <coughs> that is an incorrect answer. The ancient Chinese said that pi was the square root of 10. <coughs> that too is incorrect. And where are those once mighty empires now? <coughs> History shows us the peril facing any civilization that gets the wrong answer on this one question math quiz. The mathematician Archimedes, wanting to avoid the fate of those Egyptians and Chinese, cleverly hedged his bets. He refused to say exactly what pi is evasively asserting only that pi is somewhere between 3 and 1 seventh and 3 and 10 seventy firsts. But Archimedes was no role model. When he couldn't draw enough attention to himself through his ideas about math and physics, he ran buck naked through the streets of Syracuse. Do we really want to expose our children to the ideas of a man with so little respect for public decency or for the feelings of the fine people of central New York? Scientists of the modern era have completely drunk Archimedes' Kool-Aid and jumped headfirst down Archimedes' pie hole. But it's time we stopped putting our faith in fake experts and turned to the real expert, the creator of the universe. In both the first book of Kings and the second book of Chronicles, we are told, here I quote the original English text of the Bible, And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one rim to the other it was, round all about, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. That molten sea was a circle with circumference thirty cubits and diameter ten cubits. Since 30 cubits equals 10 cubits times 3, this tells us that biblical pi is exactly 3. Let's prove mathematically that the Bible's formula is correct. A circle has no beginning and no end, so the left-hand side of the equation is infinite. Meanwhile, a diameter does have a beginning and an end, so it's finite. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that 3 is finite, and that the product of two finite numbers is finite, so the right-hand side of the equation is finite, so something is wrong with the Bible's formula. But what's wrong is the way we're writing the 3. This way of writing the number goes back to the Middle Ages, and it comes from people east of Europe and south of Europe who didn't look like you and me and didn't believe the things that you and I believe. But around the year 1600, Europeans took that Hindu-Muslim numeral system and used it to invent the decimal system, so that the number 3 can also be written as 3.0 or 3.0. 
zero, zero. Or, here's what the author of the Bible had in mind, 3.000000 dot dot dot, with infinitely many zeros, an infinite decimal number, and a finite number times an infinite number is infinite, so the right-hand side of the equation is infinite too. And infinity equals infinity, QED. Some atheists subject to this proof, pointing out that the biblical text couldn't have meant that the true pi was infinite decimal three, since the Bible was written many centuries before the decimal system was invented. But as usual, the atheists have things backwards. The fact that the Bible's formula foreshadows the decimal system shows us that the author of the text knew about the decimal system back in biblical times, long before mortal man dreamed it up, providing further proof of the divine provenance of Scripture. If that's not enough mathematical evidence for you, look at those digits to the right of the decimal point, all perfect circles. Now, I, I want you to pause this video and do an experiment. Don't just take my word for things. Buy yourself a DVD of some recent Hollywood movie or other. And buy one of those flexible tape measures they sell at hardware stores. And measure as carefully as you can the diameter and the circumference of that disc you will find that the circumference of the DVD does not appear to be exactly three times the diameter, but seems slightly larger. This shows how deeply Satan has infiltrated Hollywood and even your local hardware store. The false pie is like the serpent of Genesis, always trying to trick us. The true pie is like the serpent being forced to destroy himself by swallowing his own tail. The difference in length when you account for the overlap between head and tail is exactly 0.1415. The stakes in this contest between God and Satan couldn't be higher. After the Great Flood, God promised us that he wouldn't destroy our world again and his symbol of that promise was the rainbow, a perfect half-circle, the true and original Ark of the Covenant. But in Leviticus, God warns us, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in weight or in measure. If we mismeasure God's circle, we nullify God's promise. And then, he shall surely punish us for our lack of piety.